Welcome to our midweek uh, Lenten service gate for this week. Uh, my name is Pastor Peter Gallieni, I'm pastor of the Ringwood Knox Lutheran Parish, and thank you for joining us today. As I have been, I've been using the uh, Commission on Worship worship resources for midweek Lenten services and using uh, sermons from retired pastor, Pastor Vernon Kleining, and I'd like to thank both Pastor Vernon and our Commission on Worship for providing these resources. The theme uh, for uh, our address is uh, from Jesus' words, I thirst. May God bless your worship and we begin with our opening sentence. He was treated harshly but endured it humbly. He never said a word. Like a lamb about to be slaughtered, like a sheep about to be shorn, he never said a word. He was arrested and sentenced and led off to die and no one cared about his fate. He was put to death for the sins of our people. He was placed in a grave with those who are evil. He was buried with the rich, even though he had never committed a crime or ever told a lie. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, you were lifted up on the cross to redeem the world and you shed your blood to forgive our sins. By your holy life, suffering and death on, behalf, on our behalf, give us joy and receive us into eternal life. For you live and reign with the Father and the Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us sing our First him, glory be to Jesus. <clears throat> Angel, oh, 
Gospel according to St. Matthew in chapter 27, beginning at verse 27. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. All who see me mock at me, they make mouths at me, they shake their heads. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. Many bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. Our psalm is Psalm 69. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in the miry depths where there is no foothold. I have come into the deep waters. The floods engulf me. I am worn out, calling for help. My throat is parched. My eyes fail, looking for my God. Those who hate me without reason outnumber the hairs of my head. Many are my enemies without cause, those who seek to destroy me. I am forced to restore what I did not steal. You, God, know my folly. My guilt is not hidden from you. Lord, the Lord Almighty, may those who hope in you not be disgraced because of me. God of Israel, may those who seek you not be put to shame because of me. For I endure scorn for your sake, and shame covers my face. I am a foreigner to my own family, a stranger to my own mother's children. For zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who insult you fall on me. When I weep and fast, I must endure scorn. <clears throat> when I put on sackcloth, people make sport of me. Those who sit at the gate mock me, and I am the song of the drunkards. But I pray to you, Lord, in the time of your favour. In your great love, O God, answer me with your sure salvation. Rescue me from the mire, do not let me sink. Deliver me from those who hate me from the deep waters. Do not let the flood waters engulf me, or the depth swallow me up, or the pit close its mouth over me. Answer me, Lord, out of the goodness of your mercy. In your great mercy, turn to me. Do not hide your face from your servant. Answer me quickly, for I am in trouble. Come near and rescue me. Deliver me because of my foes. You know how I am scorned, disgraced and shamed. All my enemies are before you. Scorn has broken my heart and has left me helpless. I looked for sympathy, but there was none, for comforters, but I found none. They put gall in my food and gave me vinegar for my thirst. May the table set before them become a snare, may it become retribution and a trap. 
May their eye be darkened so they cannot see and their backs be bent forever. Pour out your wrath on them. Let your fierce anger overtake them. May their place be deserted. Let there be no one to dwell in their tents. For they persecute those you wound and talk about the pain of those you hurt. Charge them with crime upon crime. Do not let them share in your salvation. May they be blotted out of the book of life and not be listed with the righteous. But as for me, afflicted and in pain, may your salvation, God, protect me. I will praise God's name in song and glorify him with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord more than an ox, more than a bull with its horns and hooves. The poor will see and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts live. The Lord hears the needy and does not despise his captive people. Let heaven and earth praise him, the seas and all that move in them, for God will save Zion and rebuild the cities of Judah. Then people will settle there and possess it. The children of his servants will inherit it and those who love his name will dwell there. Our second reading, this one is written in Matthew chapter 27, beginning at verse 32. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink, mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots, and sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of the Israel. Let him come down now from the cross and we will believe in him. Trust in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, rebels who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. My face is red with weeping and deep darkness is on my eyelids. Look and see, is there any sorrow like my sorrow? Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by? Look and see, is there any sorrow like my sorrow? Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord, Like Jesus, we too thirst. We thirst for your word. Bless the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts, so they may be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I thirst. Can you recall a time when you were desperately thirsty and unable to quench your thirst? We see our right to healthy, and plentiful drinking water as one of the most basic of human rights. Did you know that 80% of disease in the third world could be cured if people had access to clean water? I thirst is the shortest of our Saviour's seven words from the cross and it is the most thoroughly human. When Jesus experienced this thirst previously, he had asked an adulterous woman, the woman from Samaria, for a drink. Often when our Lord wished to bestow a favour on someone, 
he first sought a favour from them. And instead of reproaching the much married Samaritan woman, Jesus asks her to give him a drink. Our Lord wanted her to see he is, a, he is necessary for our spiritual health as our living water, just as much as physical, earthly water is. Only Jesus can satisfy the thirst of our spirit for permanent fellowship and communion with God. Jesus promises that those who drink of this water that I will give will never be thirsty. He says, the water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. John chapter 4. Behind the restlessness and discontent of our times, there is a thirst for something that is large enough to permanently satisfy the deepest needs of our human hearts. There is a God-shaped vacuum in our hearts that only God can fill. Psalm 42 expresses this longing. It says, As a deer longs for flowing streams of water, <clears throat> so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God. And Jesus says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. It's one of the Beatitudes. God will satisfy their hunger and thirst, he says. We thirst for wholeness and peace. And the Bible promises in Isaiah 26.3 that perfect peace can only be found by keeping our minds focused on God. We thirst. We thirst for unconditional love. We thirst for acceptance and understanding. We thirst for healing of our wounds and our heartaches. But only the one who cried out from the cross, I thirst, can meet those needs. Jesus identified with our deepest needs. He was hungry for many days in the wilderness. He needed human company at the most critical moment of his life. He suffered from tiredness and exhaustion. He wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. When Jesus was nailed to the cross, he refused to drink wine mixed with myrrh because this was a type of painkiller. And Jesus wanted to experience the fullness of suffering for us. He wanted to be fully conscious of what was going on around him so that he could save one of the thieves and help his own mother. But now his thirst is unbearable. In this plea, I thirst, Jesus is closest to our need. He is revealed as one of us. He reveals his humanity. This plea is something like a child in need of a drink in the middle of the night. Jesus became one of us. He became one with us in every way. And he did that so that he, so that he could make us one with him. There is nothing shameful about being in me. We care for ourselves so that we can care for others. This is only one of the seven words that Jesus spoke from the cross. It's the only one that refers to physical pain. It's comforting to know that Jesus suffered with us as well as for us. When we suffer today, Jesus remembers what suffering is like. He experienced our suffering firsthand. And that is why he is proud to call us his brothers and sisters. 
On the road to Damascus, St. Paul learned that wherever Christians suffer and are persecuted, that Jesus suffers with them. He couldn't look at suffering in the face of Christians without seeing Jesus. Suffering for us didn't come easily for our Lord. The New Testament tells us that he learned obedience to God's will through the school of suffering. Nothing human is foreign to Jesus. Jesus suffered betrayal by two of his closest companions, Peter and Judas. He was subject to an unjust legal process where lies were spoken about him. Today we meet the thirst of Christ in those who are thirsty around us. Jesus said, I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. And as much as you did this to one of the least of my brothers or sisters, you have done it unto me. On the cross, Jesus speaks on behalf of every thirsty human being. And he gives a voice to their need. As the soldiers met Christ's need for water, so our Saviour also meets our needs. For truly I tell you, whoever gives a cup of water for you to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose their reward. What an encouragement that is for all of us. The cost of our sin has been paid in full. Having won salvation for us, Jesus now thirsts for our hearts and our minds. Jesus thirsts every day for our company with him. Our Lord longs to be with you every day of your life. Will you let him? The Bible ends with his true invitation. Let everyone who thirsts come. Let everyone who wishes take water of life as a gift. Revelation 22, verse 17. Jesus promises, anyone who comes to me, I will never drive away. John 6, 37. And only Jesus can permanently meet, meet your deepest needs now and in eternity. Amen. And may the peace of God that surpasses all of our understanding keep your hearts and your minds forever in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us now come to Jesus as we come to Calvary's holy mountain and sing our next hymn. Come to Calvary's holy mountain, Die.
that drinks shall live forever tis a soul renewing flood God is faithful God will never break his covenant of blood signed when our Redeemer died sealed when he was glorified Let us pray. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy, stay with us, Lord. For it is towards evening and the day is almost over. Stay with us, Lord, and with your whole church. At the end of the day, at the end of our life, at the end of the world, stay with us, Lord. With your grace and goodness, with your holy word and sacrament, with your comfort and blessing, stay with us, Lord. When we face the night of suffering and fear, the night of doubt and temptation, the night of bitter death, stay with us, Lord, and with all your faithful ones through time and eternity. Watch, dear Lord, with those who wake or watch or weep tonight, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Hear us, Lord. Tend your sick ones, rest your weary ones, bless your dying ones. Hear us, Lord. Soothe your suffering ones, pity your troubled ones, shield your joyous ones. Hear us, Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Lord, be with all of us. Drive away the devil and remove every trap, he says. Let your holy angel stay with us and keep us in peace. And let your blessing be always on us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thank you again for worshipping with us and may God bless you as we uh, draw closer to Holy Week and um, look forward to um, celebrating the resurrection, uh, not just um, at Easter time, but also uh, in our eternal future. So until then, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Thank you and God bless you and I look forward to um, seeing you next time.